bus services, jobs, clubs, leisure centres, all housing schemes, all these things are being delivered across England by town and parishes already. And so I want to talk about local, stronger, non-party political governance. In Hampshire, although not in Southampton or Portsmouth, we've got 262 town and parish councils already. The sad fact is that most uh, members of the public, I think I'm safe on safe ground there, the same majority, are either cynical about politics or completely disengaged and are not interested. Knowledge of how things work is low, because it's so complex, we've already discussed that. And the reputation perception is at least negative and sometimes worse. Membership of political parties is even more of a minority sport than going to church, and it's unusual for a councillor to vote against party lines. It's tricky, trust me. <laughs> That's another life I have. Um, none of these factors support a healthy democracy. Two core issues are the centrist nature of government in this country and the lack of real engagement with vast swathes of the community by layers of government, both local and central. And we talked about simplification, we'll get there in a minute. Strategically, we need a complete overhaul of local government structure and a new deal between local and central and proper financing because that's sadly lacking and that was a, a chance missed with the Localism Act 2011. Talking about devolution while strangling the life out of local government offers little credibility, not just to me because I'm a simple man, lacks resonance and offers no incentive to the public to get involved. Additionally, the first past the post system does not support inclusivity or long-term political thinking, which are all problems that most of us who are central will understand. To interest people, you, you need to make them believe there's a point in being involved, that they can make their place better, and the representation, representation of the people will be listened to, in preference to powerful lobbies or in support of the status quo. But one of the richest countries in the world has so many homeless, so many social issues and such inequality, and where key institutions such as housing, energy, are so broken, why would the man in the street take politicians seriously? I've got a military background, and time and time again, when I study tactics and strategy, you see inexplicably, inexplicably, those in charge fighting the next war, they always use the previous war strategy because it's what they're comfortable with. They're then surprised when obsolescence occurs through technology, innovation in strategy, or sometimes simply coming up against a culture that harnesses the full potential and diversity of the opposing team. And this ain't rocket science. You won't be surprised that the same applies to local and central government. So what are some of the barriers in local government? Managers instead of leaders is one. Technically competent, so promoted into a role which they will perform safely, without risk. But whatever business, even if it's a social business, ever needed this kind of person as a leader or as chief exec. Another is action following the constraints of finance, with each authority stuck in their own psychological prison. Rather than finding solutions, and removing the barriers to implementation. So, for example, it's obvious to me that social care and our national emergency service, I can't call it health service, are disasters financially, and a One Health and Care service must be better. Is anyone really confident that that's going to happen in the next 10 years? Another mess in the, work, in the making. A third issue followed from the second, Turkey's and Christmas. Look at the police as a case study. How many different forces are there? Many, and most actually, with communication systems that can't even talk and link across county borders. Could you make that up, really? But there's no queue of chief officers calling for a national serious crime force and perhaps lo local low-level crime units working to local mayors. You transpose this issue into local government and you see the problem. So what's the solution? We need a strategic template for the country. Think about the New Forest or the East Hampshire, which are not too far away. You've got the parish and town council. You've got the district council, you've got the county council, you've got the park authority. Let's not start talking about leps and other things, it gets quite confusing. So that's four layers at least. Would anyone seriously advocate this model or even think of continuing it? But yet the LGA cry is no more cuts. We need complete redesign and we actually need to strip away the layers. I think we need one layer of strategic authority at sub regional level. I don't need a regional authority. So we need a strategic authority that are delivering the bins and doing those essential things that we need. And then we need community authorities. They can be as diverse as you like. Even at the moment, Shrewsbury, 80,000 people, tiny parishes in Hampshire, 100 people. It doesn't matter, that diversity is key. Let, so don't give it duties, give it a general power. Let it raise the taxes community wants. 
Let the community choose its priorities through a conversation. Free the community to be involved and act, do what it wants. We need to invigorate local governments, give it a new feel. We do not struggle with numbers of volunteers when the cause is right. That's so clear across this country. So community councils that deliver the local services, facilities and representation that you want, with a strategic principal authority to deliver sub-regional services. Depoliticise things like education and health care. Stop the tinkering and measuring. So why local governance in conclusion? Because when it's not effective and efficient, because people get involved and then it's not very good. So you need to be able to get rid of them. It can be accountable because you've got people living in the same place. It can be, it can offer innovation. <coughs> there are real benefits in local delivery of quality and diversity of services according to need, rather than led by an overarching contract from a remote place. Those changes are easier to affect when it doesn't go well. So I'm proposing two layers of local government, proper funding for local government, massive, most importantly of all, massive culture change in central government to affect real decentralization, because we're not far from places like North Korea and uh, <coughs> places like that in terms of the, how centralist we are. Local councils themselves need to be more responsive, make communication central to the mission, <coughs> and resist, above all, the stage management of consultation decision-making of democracy itself. Let's remove the barriers, more non-party political local governance, where people choose their own tax levels and the services, facilities and representation they want to pay for. Help people understand that rights, responsibility and respect cannot be affected in isolation. Three go together. Let them decide <coughs> how they <coughs> to deliver.